Hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm Natalie from the blog LegacyInDays.com and I'm here today to share with you our 2021 through 2022 homeschool year in review. In this video, I'm excited to share with you some of our tried and true favorites as well as some new curriculum that we tried and loved this year. There are a few things that we're going to kind of let go of in the coming year that we've realized just aren't really working for us, even if we've used them for several years now. And there are some things that are new to us in the coming year as well. And I'm gonna talk about some of our plans for the 2022 to 2023 homeschool year as well. So I hope you'll stick around and watch this video and get some good encouragement and insight and maybe some new ideas for some fresh beginnings in your own homeschool or some confidence to continue using what you have that is working for your family as well. So this year is our 12th year homeschooling our children. We have nine children and this year we had seven students, about seven grades. We teach primarily through the Charlotte Mason philosophy. And so I do teach more by forms, which is kind of a way to group kids together uh, so that I'm not teaching each individual child every subject individualized. I group some subjects. And if you have a question about what that looks like and what that means, I do have a homeschool video on that, which you can see in the cards above. And go ahead and check that video out for a little bit more of a detailed explanation of that. I have a very unique dynamic with nine children toddler, two busy boys that are kind of in and out of homeschool, and then the seven other students or six other students that need formal, consistent time with me. And so that is going to be a very unique dynamic that most of you don't have, um, but I still feel like you can gain some insight and maybe some ideas for what might work for you in your particulars and your family. found over the years books that have worked really well for our family and I have a few criteria that it has to fulfill and it has to meet consistently or I'm just going to go ahead and drop the book because I like to find something that works well and if it doesn't work well I need to find something else. Challenges the students while still maintaining their interest and engagement. I really want the kids to be able to narrate to me pretty easily what I've read to them or what they've read themselves. If they can't do that and it's consistently happening over and over again that different children just don't narrate a book well. I usually know it's the book's fault, not because I feel like my kids are perfect narrators. I just know if I've read something to them that they can't engage with and connect with, I would rather read a book that they do. So even if the book is great, it's just not a good fit for us if that's the case. Second, I wanna be able to enjoy the content along with the kids. So if I don't enjoy a book over and over year after year, we might pass that one up as well. It can't be overly complex. Uh, usually I just find my kids get lost in all of the details. There's certain curriculums that can teach the same thing in a very straightforward and engaging way and the kids can grasp the concepts easily and quickly and there are some just take a long time to beat around the bush to get to the main point and we just don't have time to mess around with that. I want it to be straightforward enough that the kids can do the work where it applies in particular subjects independently well. I do not want to have much of our subjects have to require me to have oversight and walk them through step by step everything that they're doing in, in form two and up. Form one, we do everything together. Form two, we're moving into independent learning and by the end of form two, they should be pretty much completely independent. I do talk about that in my other videos, by the way, if you're curious what I mean by that. But I want the independent work of that particular curriculum to be easy to understand and easy for them to do and to comprehend. I don't want it to just be easy for them to do. I want them to be challenged in a way that they also are understanding the material quickly and absorbing the information in a short amount of time. In other words, we want to be able to stick to short lessons. If it takes a long time to get to our main point, like I mentioned earlier, not going to work. And lastly, I prefer that it's affordable enough if it's a consumable that I can buy a large amount of them for our large family every year or else pass it down through the family. A book that can be reused, for example, hardback books that do not have consumable content inside of them, you use a separate notebook or whatnot, works really well for our family. I love to be able to reuse our old favorites and it feels like a familiar friend that you're meeting once again to circle back around. And that is what I want homeschooling to feel like, especially for me as a teacher. I am repeating books and repeating forms over and over again. And 
I so far have found some curriculum to just be so enjoyable to go back through and I gain more out of it and I know the children are going to love it and I'm excited to teach it again. If it feels dull to me, it likely feels dull to them and I'm not gonna keep going with a book like that. Subjects that worked really well for us this year was we followed the A Gentle Feast curriculum book list guide. Our schedule varied away from hers depending on the form because my older students, the two in high school and my eighth grader were not doing their core subjects according to the book list of a gentle feast curriculum. But my form two, which was my fifth grader down, did use pretty much primarily the book list from that and we enjoyed a lot of the books on there, especially the biography books. Kids enjoy those and they just eat those up. Our older kids did Omnibus for their third year, I believe this year, and that was delightful for them. They participated in a local co-op to do that, and it is just lends itself really well to be able to have great rousing discussions with their peers, and we did their first Omnibus year in 2020, and um, they did it with me. I really enjoyed having that special time with them, but it is and does lend itself really well to a group dynamic, and it is more comprehensive curriculum in that it incorporates history, literature, writing, rhetoric, all in one, and so they get a chance to establish their own opinions framed within a biblical worldview on some of the really prominent and formative books of our times. And we're excited to use that, use that curriculum in the future with our high schoolers. So for history this year, alongside of the A Gentle Feast book list that we really enjoyed, the biographies anyway, the core history we ended up using was the story of the world, which she does not recommend in her curriculum. But I have used it in previous years in the past and I ended up circling back around to it this year because it comes with an audio CD set and I knew I have a baby and I'm gonna have limited time with so many students and two high schoolers that I needed to simplify wherever I could simplify. It was probably my third year using this particular book and I loved it and the boys loved it, really latched onto the ideas. We ended up spending more time in it than I anticipated. We have the activity book and then I also was able to purchase the PDF download of the activity book which made it really simple and easy for me to just go ahead and download what we needed for the week as I would just print off the pages that we wanted to use for the term and the boys kept those loose pages in their own notebook. We kept timeline. just really enjoyed using this curriculum together. There's a lot of other options to supplement for your older students. You can give them more assignments. We can do further research. We can get more books in the library. They have recommendations. And the stories that I read from to the boys in here are written so engaging that the kids just understood and narrated back to me really well. My um, 10 year old was able to engage with this fairly well as well and there's questions to ask in here <sighs> ripped um after each reading after the child narrates there's also comprehensive questions and just um, a lot of options to do or not do even just having them listen to this on audiobook whenever our time was short was a wonderful option and time saving option for our family as well So what worked really well for us as well, how we strayed a little bit away from the A Gentle Feast book list was we went ahead and used Apology of Science, which we have done all the way through for our high school kids. And we just graduated our oldest daughter this year. And we have done Apology of Science in the high school years consistently for the both of the kids and really enjoy that. But we do have a very proficient science teacher that teaches at our uh, local co-op and so the kids took classes there with that teacher and were really blessed by that. The teacher's manuals are very helpful and have all that you need really to guide your child through the experiments and all of the questions and answers and everything are there and included in the tests and whatnot and I really feel like it's a very doable curriculum and very understandable, relatable, and consumable. The kids really absorb the information.
other thing I love about the manual is it teaches the full scientific method. So they are learning and testing theory and testing experiments and not just reading dry facts. They are seeing all the ins and outs from a biblical worldview, a Christian perspective. And so this is a creationist that wrote this series and I love the perspective and the viewpoint that he brings and offers to the children. The beauty of how God made the world to work and all of its intimate details that he has uh, revealed to us through science. So it's a real gift to be able to use this curriculum. And our little guys love the A Gentle Feast science books that were recommended this year um, for our Form 1 students. They would listen to those during quiet time so I wouldn't have to add another read aloud after I've done their independent work with them and their independent lessons with me. They would listen to those during their quiet time and then chat with me about them when it was over during snack time and that worked out really well and saved me some time. We really enjoy those books that have been included in the A Gentle Feast curriculum book. Moving on now into logic. Our eighth grader did logic, the art of argument this year. That worked out really well. This is our third student to use that curriculum and it is, it is also teacher friendly. Um, it's a simple enough course to uh, go ahead and teach yourself with the uh, teacher's manual. And he enjoyed that and was able to keep up with that independently on his own pretty well. So I really would recommend that book. That's one of our favorites for teaching logic that we have used so far. It's a fun, um, engaging way to learn it. It does come with a video series that the kids have done in co-op before, but we didn't use that this year. My son just did it on his own with me going over things with him. All right, and our literature this year was also taken from the A Gentle Feast book list and uh, her schedule we kept up with for the most part. We used those for read alouds and really enjoyed pretty much all the samplings that she had to offer there. I really enjoy how she takes the literature suggestions and corresponds them to the history timeline within the same time period that we're studying in history and that is so such a fun way to engage with and interact with um, the people of the times and their stories as well and what's going on and make it really relatable. For our geography this year we stuck with the A Gentle Feast book list recommendations for the most part but I'll put some caveats later when I talk about what didn't work because there are a few that we're going to move away from. But we did so much map work with the a story, the story of the world history, um, and we used Satera online, Satera.com, and it just the kids do a lot of geography drills that way, and so I don't feel like we need to and have not supplemented with any other his, uh, geography curriculum other than those things, and then reading some of the biographies that are listed um, in the Agental Fees book list. So for grammar this year, this is something new that we tried that worked so well for us and I'm really excited to share with you guys about today and it is the IEW which stands for the Institutes for Excellence in Writing Curriculum. I've not used their curriculum in the past because to be honest when I looked through it, it didn't seem very teacher friendly and I need something that's teacher friendly because I just have such a short amount of time. I can't be supervising, like I said earlier, every step by step the child's curriculum. Hires a very minimal amount of time for me even though I do sit with the kids and do it. They can do quite a bit of it on their own and it takes only 10 to 15 minutes a day and the kids absorb quickly what they are learning. So what this grammar program uses is a full story laid out in sentence by sentence, which is a daily um, assignment that you, you do a sentence or two from the story and they learn to, um, they learn the grammar focused around the actual sentence. And they also um, learn a rich vocabulary word in every lesson and they are also learning writing style as they're going along as well stylized writing and how to pick out good writing and um, bad writing so it has been an awesome curriculum i love it so much what i ended up doing was i bought all of the teachers manuals for the curriculum and it does include you can buy a lesson book but what i ended up doing was just buying i believe the pdf student notebook comes for free with the purchase of a teacher's manual if i'm remembering right and so it's printable it's a printable file which i can print off as many times as i need for as many students as i need which for me is a huge budget saver as they sit and work on it i can give them input as necessary so i highly recommend this curriculum for sure i think it is very affordable and really comprehensive as well as just 
super easy for the kids to ab absorb the information. I, we've never loved grammar this much before. will continue on with Life of Fred. In fact, I've started using the curriculum earlier. I normally start the kids with formal math around fifth grade, and we just do drills and whatnot before that, but we are starting them sooner with these fun little ones just because we have found it to be so effective and helpful to form that really solid base for them, and they love it. They love the silly stories. They love Fred. We've been really happy with it and graduated our daughter with it. She had her qualms with some of it, but I honestly feel like that would have happened with any math curriculum. In fact, probably more so. Um, this teaches the child to logically work through trying to find the solution and answer on their own with a story and word problem, which makes them learn to think logically. And I feel like our children are really good at problem solving because of this math curriculum. This curriculum does a great job of teaching the child to figure it out on their own, which sometimes the student does not like very much. Okay, for phonics and writing, we continued using our Explode the Code consumables. This is the only consumable that we use except for like journaling notebooks that I print off with our other curriculums. We don't actually use any kind of like life packs or anything like that, but I love the Explode the Code books. They worked so well for our kids. We've done all of the books now, all the way up through the eighth book. I just have them use these fast as they can do it. Sometimes it's a page a day and sometimes they're doing three to five pages because they're just really into it and I just let them go to town and I just give them a new one when they finish it. And until they're ready to start their grammar in fifth grade, we do these. Now I am teaching reading alongside of this. This is just a phonics curriculum. Um, but I think that our kids that were learning how to read while we were doing this, when I started these a few years ago, I feel like have a much better grasp on phonics than they did with our previous curriculum. The kids can just open up a book, do a page real quick, and they're reading really, you know, three, four syllable words faster than they would, I think, without them. So I love these, and we are going to continue with those. The other writing curriculum that we did this year that we're gonna stick with is the Little Red Writing Book until I find another one I like more, which I haven't yet. There's a lot out there that require a lot from me, and I already am doing so many lessons with phonics and math and reading and grammar and read alouds of history and everything across all of the forms. And so I have to be really careful and limit what I can do and what I can't do. Now our daughter did it and she wasn't as into it. I don't think she got as much out of it or applied herself as much, but we let them do it on their own. And I think my son just liked it more. And so that's one of the reasons I, I'm gonna try it again is because if it works really well for one student, it might work again. If it doesn't work for one student, it might work again still. So I don't totally cancel it out until it just keeps not working for us. That one definitely I would say we're going to use again next year. Okay, so now we're gonna get into what did not work this year. So one thing that did not work this year was having my older children and my husband help me. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to hire a tutor or something. And the reason for that is just there was more important things for them to do. It wasn't because they didn't have the heart to wanna help or anything like that or even the time. It was just what happened was that I needed their help with the younger kids. And the younger kids were fresh in the morning and ready for school when my older kids were very busy with their own heavy high school load and my husband was at work. So by the time the afternoon rolled around, when my older kids were available to help them with a math lesson or reading lesson, the little kids were just not gonna have it. I mean, they would sit, but it was just like, you know, going in one ear and out the other. And that made it really difficult to just align the schedules in a way that worked for the older kids and my husband and the student at the same time was a challenge. And so I ended up just going ahead and, and doing that in the morning, fitting it in in the morning work around the baby and everything. But that meant that we did less lessons in math than we would have done and less phonics lessons and reading lessons than we would have done otherwise. And so I do feel like we are a bit behind this year from where I was hoping we'd be at. So this summer we're probably gonna play a little bit of catch up with math and a little bit of catch up with some reading instruction. And that is okay by me. I also know from experience that our children learn through the summer whether we do lessons or not. And come next fall, I'm always surprised at how much they have learned and grown and matured over the summer without any formal instruction. You can learn through play, and that right there is proof. 
The next thing that didn't really work well for us this year was the Form 2 Science Recommendations in a Gentle Feast curriculum. I have tried them in the past and we have enjoyed some of the books. They've been fun. We do like the science biographies, but the core curriculum just hasn't been as effective as the Apologia books. And I'm going to go back to those for the lower levels. Um, I've used them consistently in the upper levels, but I'm going to go back to using them again for my lower level students. I would say because we have such a large family dynamic, some of those books in a general fees curriculum, I don't feel like fit well for a group teaching session, if that makes sense. So one of them this year was The Way Things Work. I think it's an awesome reference book and my boys really enjoyed it, but I didn't feel like they got as much from it in the way and, and ability I had to teach it to the few of them that I had sitting with me. We needed to have a better, more structured uh, format that I could teach um, in a more engaging way, I think, with more students. And so the apology, it really fits that bill well. I can go ahead and tailor tailor what's needed by using the journals that they provide, the student journals, and they enjoy the Apologia books more. So we're gonna go back to those. Um, so we're gonna stay um, with the A Gentle Feast biography book list for science, but not the core subject books anymore. Another thing that didn't work well for us this year was using the geography books for the Form 1 students that are the Hauling Sea Hauling's books, Paddle to the Paddle to the Sea, A Tree in the Trail, and Seabird. Um, I've used those several years and I've just realized the kids don't really like them. I like them and that I've found that it's really difficult to get them to narrate them. They're not really absorbing the information really well and um, I've just decided it's, we're just gonna move on. Like I said earlier, it's easy to fill in geography through our history studies and Cetera and the biographies that we're reading otherwise. And so we're gonna go ahead and drop those books as well. Another thing that didn't work for us was, as you can guess, grammar. So our grammar curriculum in the past was surely English that I would start in fifth grade as well as using Simply Grammar earlier on, or sometimes Simply Grammar we'd begin more fourth or fifth grade and then move into Shirley English in sixth grade and then we use our mother tongue for high school grammar. And so I'm just, we're just gonna move away from those for now as we found a better fit for our family. Although I will say, I love the Shirley English chants and songs and I still feel like I wanna play those um, CDs so the kids can learn those because I think they're super helpful and it worked for us. Uh, for the time being for them to learn grammar. The thing that the IEW has that the Shirley English doesn't have is more of an applicable context so the kids can actually apply their grammar to real life books that they're reading, I think more easily than, and it's comprehensive in that way, than the Shirley English where I feel like it's easy for them to understand their lesson and then once they close the book, it's kind of like, I don't remember how that applies. So I, I love the IEW. Now moving into what our plans are for this coming year. Some things that we're gonna change is we won't have a student that we did last year, which is really amazing. We will be losing a student and not gaining a new one yet. My littlest guy is five years old and I'm not teaching him formally for another year. So I will lose a student for the first time. And then our son is a junior this year and the following year he will be a senior. And every two years, Lord willing after that, we'll be launching another child. So it's very exciting and it's kind of a unique season. What we are going to do differently this year, put our ninth, new ninth grader, our third born son, second born son, third born child into C prep, which is college prep that is directed towards Christian homeschooling families. And he's gonna take some science classes and not sure what else yet likely because they do teach the apology a curriculum and we'll be using the book the textbook that we would choose for him anyway so that is an option we are looking into this year as well and another one i'm looking into is beginning visual latin uh, if any of you have heard of that program before let me know in the comments below but it can be a subscription base where it's $25 a month and you can take whatever one of their classes that you want, free streaming, and I've heard lots of great reviews on it. It's an online program that is supposed to be very engaging and Latin has not been something I've been able to prioritize just on my schedule, although I really do want the boys to get a good base of language um, this way and we haven't been able to do that. So we're gonna try that this coming year. And that's as far as we get this coming year that I've made plans for. So thanks for joining me here today on this video and I hope you guys have a wonderful week and a wonderful summer enjoying the fun free time that you'll have to be able to really fellowship and play outside.
I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.